Hello, I made a video a while ago where I was having a go at flying this quad in acro mode using ArduPilot and for the most part it went fairly well although there was a sort of an issue where it wasn't very stable in holding its attitude especially at speed it seemed like the back of the quad was getting pushed down so it constantly wanted to sort of level itself a bit and um, I had disabled one of the options in ArduPilot which lets you say that you don't want to use the accelerometer at all and you're just pure gyro only rate mode and I had thought that that would be the best thing to do coming from Betaflight where you know basically that's what you do all the time um, but there was a guy in the comments uh, a guy called Leonard Hall who I think is one of the developers or something to do with ArduPilot and he said that it actually would be better performing if I had left the accelerometer enabled so that it would use the accelerometer to to keep itself at the last pitch or roll that you had placed it at um, so I gave that a try and it was much much <laughs> more pleasant to fly he said that um, the rate mode only modes in Arduino Pilot were never really tuned um, very well or they, they were never intended to be used like that that much um, so anyway it was way better after taking his suggestion and um, I was flying around <laughs> got quite used to it actually and um, got a little bit too confident. Actually what happened here is I wanted to look at it because I've never really seen a 500 sized cold copter flying around at sort of 40-50 kilometers an hour uh, in third person like line of sight. So I set it up on a trajectory which seemed like it would be okay uh, though it was a, a bit dark like it was getting towards dusk and um, yeah unfortunately when I took my goggles off to look for it it always takes a little bit longer than you think to locate it in your line of sight view and then um, the ground unfortunately rose up to meet it which I wasn't expecting so that's what we see there and another comment that came up fairly commonly in the last video was that this frame might be too soft and flexy I don't really think that's the case there are two versions of this S500 frame and this is the one that has carbon fiber tubes inside the arms there's another one you can get which doesn't and that's maybe what you're thinking of but if I grab hold of this arm and I try and turn it to the left like it does it does bend a little bit so you can see there before the, the leg comes off the ground it's bending but I don't think it's as bad as what you guys were saying I did have a frame ages ago I think it was like a flame wheel one it wasn't exactly that DJI flame wheel brand but it was a clone of that and it was absolutely hopeless it was soft and it was almost like made of jelly like it was so bad I never even used it um, but anyway with that in mind I thought because I had always been intending to make another frame to do this um, farm cruiser kind of thing I would make one that's going to be really really rigid so that's what we're doing in this video so this time I decided to put the carbon on to both sides of the plywood in advance before cutting it and uh, it's just one layer of 200 gram carbon so it shouldn't be too hard for the end mill to get through that and the wood and everything I think it'll be fine so I have this had this suggested to me a few times in previous comments so I'll give it a try and see how it works. So that's the piece, pieces cut out there. Seems to have turned out pretty nicely actually, didn't have too much trouble with it, although there was a bit of fiddling around required at the beginning to get the right tool for the job. That's what these three pieces are here, so let me give you a closer look at those. So the first thing I tried was a one millimeter end mill, and this broke straight away. Um, I was a little bit surprised because I've used this on FR4 and carbon fiber a lot, but I tried to go too deep, deep, I think, was the problem. I thought because it was plywood, it would be okay to go deeper. Um, that one has like a diamond, I'm not sure what you're supposed to call these, but I'm going to call this like the diamond cutting pattern like that. Um, so then I went to this one, which is the same pattern, but it's a uh, two millimeter. And that worked, and I got through it, but it made a bit of a mess of the edges. Like, it's usable. Um, you could just sand that off, and it would be okay. And because there's not too much resin on here, those bits are actually not as sharp and finger cutty as you might think because they're a little bit flexible. But yeah, I just didn't really like that and it left all these hairy bits around the side. 
So I thought I would try a more typical end mill like this, which is just a two flute spiral up cut, whatever you call it. It's made for aluminium, but it's um, fine for this, I thought. So that worked quite nicely, actually, much better than I thought it was going to. And one edge kept the frayed like it was before, and one edge was very nice and sharp and clean. And the one that's nice and sharp and clean was on the bottom, and that's because the flutes were pulling the carbon fibers into the wood, pressing the fibers against the wood while they're being cut. And then I remembered that I do actually have a down cutting flute thingy as well. So I thought I'd give that a try. And that's what I have here. So that's uh, this one here. So this is uh, it's the same, but the flutes are going the other way. So when it's rotating, the material's being pressed downwards like that. And so I did that on the top because I was doing this in two passes anyway. So I thought I'll do that on the top layer, like from the top, and then the bottom side will be cut with the normal upcutting one. So that in both cases the carbon will be pressed against the wood. And that turned out to give this result here, which is pretty nice. This little bit here is just where the holding tab was, so of course that wasn't cut. Uh, there's still a little bit of fuzziness on some areas somewhere on the corner, I think. It depends a little bit on the direction you're going. Yeah, that bit there is a little bit fuzzy, isn't it, on that corner? Depends which direction you're going versus the fibers of carbon. But anyway, this is a really nice result. However, I think I would just go back to doing it with the normal upcut end mill like this in the future. And the reason is that you don't need to come back and change the tool in between passes. And the other reason is that the downcut one pushes all the wood fibers and dust into the groove as you're going along. And the whole time it was making a fairly strong smell of burning wood. Uh, never actually caught on fire, but it just made me too concerned to go away and leave it um, unattended. So for that reason, I think I'd just go back to the normal um, flute. Up cutting one next time. Okay, I'm going to glue this together now. At least I'm going to tack it together with five minute epoxy and then I'll come back and do a better job with uh, the West Systems epoxy afterwards. So I've cut a little recess for this piece and the motor mount plates exactly where they should be, all in the same plane. At least it should be if this thing is working properly. And it's quite convenient that um, because they're recessed a little bit, this piece of wood can now butt up against there, and then this can butt up against that, so that that tube is going to be in the exact right position to match up with those at each end. I'll just have to center it that way. And then I can do the same at the front, although it's not quite as convenient. There's just this little bit here which by coincidence happened to be right where that uh, tube is going to go as well. So I can do that and that should be perfectly aligned. And I think I might uh, maybe glue the bottom piece on as well. Um, I've put holes all down here, so I could use those little aluminium spaces, or even plastic spaces or whatever, in between there to hold the top and the bottom on together, but I think I'm just going to make it more permanent, and I'm going to cut a 12mm wide strip of 2mm thick carbon to go all the way down here, oh, except a little hole on one side, or probably both sides actually, for the um, USB plug to go in. And that should make it super strong in bending against bending in that dimension. And it should be fairly strong in that way and twistiness as well. I think it's going to be quite strong overall. Anyway, let me get this uh, glued up. Okay, I made some side plates for this out of 2mm carbon and stuck those on there. And I glued these on a little bit more properly with some epoxy microspheres like so, and I lashed a little bit of carbon fiber tow around here, and then to get it to squash down nicely, I put some peel ply and then some heat shrink on top of it, like that. This is one that I've taken off, but it gives you a really nice result. 
and it also soaks up a little bit of the excess resin so that <clears throat> the profile of this now is nice and smooth all around and I found that also to be kind of necessary to get the carbon tote to stick down because of the small radius of this tube it wasn't just wasn't really sticking down for me but the heat shrink solves all of those problems this little bit of FR4 I stuck on here the purpose of that is so that uh, well the ESC is going to stick on here so I wanted it to be stuck onto something that's not directly on the electrically conductive carbon so this is, should be good for electrical insulation but another reason is that I wanted to have the screw heads on the bottom recessed like that because in a lot of my other builds I end up with this kind of thing where the screws are all sticking up like that and on this one it's not a big deal really oh actually it's a little bit annoying here on the top but mainly it's a problem when you want to stick a battery on there which is exactly what I'm going to want to do here uh, these screws are not going to be there by the way um, but yeah so if you want to stick a battery on here and have it you want to have it all nice and flat um, so that's why that's there and I'm thinking I might do the same kind of thing there here this hole is for the video transmitter to go through but because this plate is four millimeters thick this can't really get through far enough that the antenna can screw into it to hold it secure uh, well it will hold it secure but I don't think that pin in the middle is going to be contacting properly it doesn't get that doesn't get far enough down so I might do the same thing there but for a different reason mainly just so that I have a thinner I'm going to have to make that hole larger of course larger that large enough that that whole thing there can fit into it and then it will be able to screw down onto another piece of FR4 okay here we go it's all glued together and the final weight is 140 grams or 141 to be <laughs> to be pedantic um, so I think that's pretty good and uh, I was a little bit worried that it would be a bit twisty like if you grab this end and twisted it that way while you're holding the other end still like you know like that um, but once this side plate got on here, uh, glued in there properly and everything, um, it's not very twisty at all. It's, it's pretty good. It's just rigid and strong in every dimension. I like it. Oh, that's about 35% throttle, maybe 40 to hover. Actually, maybe a bit less than 40, actually. That's fine, right? bit more up I think about there and then this one can go to about there well it's quite wobbly when it's down it's not very tight there at all but when it's up it's all right Okay, I've been waiting about a week to get some nice weather, and boy, did we get it. This is beautiful. Unfortunately, right down the bottom of the valley there, it's still a little bit foggy or misty. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to get a good look at that second shed. I'm just going to do my three shed <laughs> inspection tour again. And then hopefully we'll have enough battery to fly around, maybe bother some goats as well after that. Anyway, let's uh, get started. Um, and I'll just take off in position hold. Just check that my position holds working because that could be quite critical depending on what happens. Look at that nice solid lock though. That's what you get when there's no wind. That is beautiful. 
but we want to do some acro flying so whoa see that's the difference in throttle and I don't want to go that fast so slow down slow down so about 40 is my target speed but look how it's um, it's holding the um, the pitch and roll quite nicely and let's go down 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 where is that shed uh, it's all bright and sunny I can't see very clearly but that thing with lots of shadow casting behind it that should be the shed right so if we flick my switches about here it's probably right yeah and adjust the throttle so we're not going down hold on hold on still going down still going down there we go <laughs> just got to make sure you don't inadvertently sink too much because then if I sink too much here it's going to um, actually lose radio signal probably because it's going to go just over the brow of the hill um, oh, and you'll notice my video transmitter says 500 milliwatts on the top left I actually set that up on smart audio which I've never bothered to do but I thought I'd do it for this one and if I change that here we can try 25 milliwatt 200 still good I just leave it on 500 so I don't have to keep changing it um, but anyway there yeah, let's uh, yeah so <laughs> that's that shed and let's uh, move on and see the other one which is oh well, going too fast too fast too fast slow down slow down 48 let's try 48 and of course my goggles are fogging up isn't that wonderful but the nice thing about having all this position hold and everything is that you can just pause it and fix up your goggles if you want to and uh, the next shed should be straight ahead there you can see the tree pe pe poking out of the the mist we're going a little bit fast still slow down oh 50 I guess I guess this quad's okay to go 50 the last one seemed to have problems at 50 yeah see all this mist um, we kind of need to go Oh, is this it here? Oh, yeah, this is it here. Okay, so that is our. Uh, let's just zero the throttle again. Come on. Come on. Why isn't the throttle. I think this just might be. I've got my throttle above the center, so I'm not sure why it says it's still descending, but. I think it's just a problem with the barometers. The barometer hasn't <coughs> hasn't been reading very well on this board. See, it's still reading that the variometer value still says we're going down, even though we're clearly going up. Now it says we're going up. Okay, I don't know. Well, let's see if we can descend a little bit here. And see, now it says we're going down at 1.2 meters per second. We're not. We're not going down that quickly. I'm sure. Oh, I can hear a motorbike out there. I wonder if that's um, the other guy who works on the farm. He lives over the far side. Might be coming along here any moment. I can hear it. You can't hear, of course. I'll just stay here for a second, just in case he comes along. There he is. I thought so. Should we try and follow him? Trouble is though, I don't want to do it in acro mode and we'll have a bit of a problem because the, um, like I said, the barometer is not very cooperative and he's going too fast. The other problem is that when I turn to face myself like I just did, we get pretty poor video because of the way the antennas behind the quad body now 
So he's, he's well out of sight, unfortunately, but I wonder if he noticed us. Where's he gone? I can't see him. <laughs> anyway, um, so, oh, fail safe, did we? Okay, fair enough. Right, let's have a look at that other shed, which I think is over that way. So let's acro ourselves over there. Um, still got lots of fog. I've only got one eye to look out of at the moment, so I might have to just pause over here and clean my goggles. Climb a bit. Where's that shed? Is that it there? Yeah, that's it. All right, so once again, we stopped reasonably well there. A little bit off. Here's the motorbike now coming past us. I don't know if you'll probably be able to hear it now. I'll just give him a wave so that... <laughs> Clean my goggles. i just give him a wave so that he knows that it was me out there. Or he'll pre presume that it was me, just in case he saw it. So that he knows it's not just some nosy neighbours flying around. There was a comment on the last video worrying about me being a nosy neighbor flying around. Wow, look how solid that position lock is. Wow. This is not a gimbal or anything. <laughs> Man, that's nice. Um, yeah, but this is all the same farm. It's a really, really, really huge farm. Yeah, well, that's the three shared inspection, I guess. Not sure what to do now, but we've got... 11.4 volts still and look how nicely it settles and it just stays there because it's using the accelerometer now to hold level my goggles fogged it up already what the hell and then I can adjust adjust the pitch a little bit to keep the altitude that I want and also the speed Let's slow down a bit and now I can pitch forward a bit so I'm just touching the pitch only no throttle yeah it's nice and smooth isn't it this is what I wanted <laughs> when I was setting up this build this is this is exactly what I wanted Let's see if we can clip the edge of this patch of trees here and then I'm gonna to have to clean my goggles again damn it, it's so annoying uh, actually, I'm just going to flip and return to launch there because I must have gone behind some trees again. Oh, that's good. The return to launch will just lift me up to the altitude where I get video back again. And I don't need to touch the throttle. And I'll just get straight back into my, it looks like 30% throttle is, is good for what I was doing there. And I can just continue on my way. That's really nice. Oh, yes. Now I can see properly. All right. Let's... Uh, I saw some turkeys over there, let's go and bother them. Right here. Right here. Can you hear them gobbling, gobbling? They're not very really scared of it, are they? They're just sort of standing there stupidly. They don't seem to have much of a self-preservation instinct, actually, turkeys. When you run at them to scare them, they, they only go as far away as minimum necessary. And even when you come out shooting them with a gun, they don't seem to really run away much. Not that I've done that, but I've, you know, I've seen the farmer do it. They just sort of stand there and wait for the next shot to come and hit them. I guess that's where the term turkey shoot comes from, isn't it? Like shooting fish in a barrel almost. Uh, there's some bulls over here somewhere too. Where are they? Oh, here. Here they are. All right. Flick. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. That was a bit. That was a bit. <laughs> that was a bit of a rough approach, wasn't it? I didn't think we were going to get that close. But what I've noticed is that they don't really uh, scare much, from this at least. 
not like the goats do. As soon as you get anywhere near the goats, they'll all just start running off. But I guess the bulls are bigger and tougher and they, they, don't, they don't scare so much. He's not even interested. Although the, the funny thing is if one of them decides he's scared and runs away, the other ones will all be affected by that and they'll follow. But it looks like we're okay. Oh, motorbike's coming back. Oh, there he is. Motorbike. Now that I have a long range quad, we can follow him for a good way. Not that I can see him anymore though. This is when it'd be cool to have an HD camera on board, wouldn't it? I can see him. Can you see him still in the bottom of the screen? Just. Looks like fun, doesn't it, riding a dirt bike along these roads? It's going faster than we are, though. I don't want to go too much faster. Oh yeah, he's, he's hit the curve, so we're just keeping up with him still. Gonna have to go faster than this though, aren't we? We can skip over these trees too. <laughs> Look at that, nice timing, right in front of us there he is. It's handy knowing where he's going to go. Okay, I don't want to go too... he's slowing right down, is he? He's right at the bottom of the screen. I still have 10.9 volts, this is great. Oh, he might just be going home again, that's... Yeah, it looks like he's just going home. Alright, I don't want to go too far over there because my goggles are fogging and I can't see the trees properly. Oh, this is great. Okay, we better stop it there. Alright, there we go. 10.5 uh, volts, better stop. So that's about all the flying video that I have for you for the time being. In the short space of time that I've had this, I think this quad has flown more than any other quad I've had, simply because of each battery lasting so long. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's probably had about 7 hours of flight time on it already. Anyway, that's the weight without the battery. Um, I think that turned out alright, but that's with the you know GPS and all that stuff on it. Um, and I've been flying with these 8045 props, carbon reinforced nylon or whatever they're called, they're quite stiff ones, 
and I think they are the best. I did experiment a little bit with these, 7045 three bladed. They look kind of cool, but they were not very helpful in terms of efficiency. They were about probably 10, maybe even 15% less efficient than those ones. I've also done quite a bit of uh, experimentation with different batteries. And so all 3S of course, and with these ones, I might have already, men already mentioned in this video somewhere, but I got 12 minutes, 17 minutes and 25 or 27 was it, minutes with that. And then I got 34 minutes with that, uh, lithium ion one that I made. Now that's all just hovering around, or I was doing some auto tuning as well, so mostly just hovering around. Um, and I was, wasn't planning to use this other one here, which is the graphene one little bit less saggy, higher C, uh, and lower, much lower internal resistance. But I was watching a JB video the other day, and at the beginning of the video he told me I was going to learn something today. And sure enough, I did, because it was a video about how to get long flight time. And one thing he was mentioning that I didn't consider was the C rating of the battery, how much it's going to sag. So I thought, well, I have this here, I'll, I'll give it a try. And I couldn't believe how good it is compared to the other ones. And the difference in hovering time, interestingly, I did a hovering test, uh, it was about the same. So this is comparable capacity wise to the other 5.2 amp hour one there. But yeah, if you're just hovering around, there's not really that much in it. This one got 27 minutes, and this one got 29 and a half minutes. That's the little video that we're looking at here. Although I let it go a little bit longer than I should have, so I'd say 29 minutes would be about a fair comparison. But the difference comes in when you're actually doing more than just hovering. So if you actually want to fly it somewhere, then this uh, graphene one, basically the flight time didn't really change that much. It went from 29 minutes just in a plane hover to 27 minutes or so, even after flying around quite a bit. Whereas these other ones here with the lower C or higher internal resistance or whatever, they were drastically, drastically affected by doing some um, fast forward flight. So the next step in this project would be to get some sort of HD camera on board. And I was planning to make a little mini gimbal like this. I got some uh, low KV motors from AliExpress. They weigh 19 grams each. This structure here is 70 grams, 75 grams or something, I think, altogether. Uh, and I started making this last year. It was initially going to be for the Runcam Hybrid, but I kind of lost interest in it. And I was doing this with my small CNC machine at the time, which is a bit of a chore to make carbon fiber stuff with. With the big CNC now, I think it'll be much easier to just blast through these boards and get another version made up. And also I have this now, this is a Runcam Thumb. Yeah, I know there's a Pro. Actually, I didn't know at the time. I only discovered after I ordered this one that was a Pro around Otherwise I would have got that. But anyway, um, yeah, that might be a little bit more suitable for putting onto the micro gimbal. Now obviously this does not have any video out, it's just power. Um, so you wouldn't be able to see the video from this while you're flying, which is kind of unfortunate. But what I'm thinking is that if I can figure out a way to link the positioning or the pitching of that servo there, and so instead of just having it on a switch, I could have it on a dial or better still, I could use an S-Bus mixer, which I might be able to just fit in there, or on top it would fit at least. And the S-Bus mixer would let me make it so that when I flip a switch, it will go into acro mode and just be stuck at the um, facing up position. And then when I put the switch the other way, then I'll be able to use the dial. And the dial would move this and my gimbal at the same uh, exact same position all the time. So the S-Bus mixer will let me do that as well. But anyway, um, not sure if I can be do bothered doing that actually. It's quite a bit of work and it's fiddly work too. Look at these tiny little, tiny little wires. And then I've got to get a Storm 32 gimbal board to stick up under there as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.